Well, if you can't tell by the college schedule or the colors behind me, let me tell you, Thanksgiving is almost here. It is Sunday before, and we welcome you to this worship service in this Christ Sunday, this last Sunday before Advent, before a new year. We're glad that you're here in our church home from your church home, wherever you are, and invite you to register your attendance with that button on our website. You'll see the Give button that allows you to do the same. And let me remind you, we are still receiving our estimate of giving cards, either the the paper ones or the electronic ones, uh, fill that out or simply fill out the recurring electronic giving that allows us to continue and predictably crank out the ministry and the mission that you know for this church. Speaking of which, we have our mission fair, which is ongoing. It is virtual and it's a great way to give twice as you give gifts through regional and national organizations in honor of those who you love this Christmas season. Also, our United Methodist Women's Real Market Fair, where you can actually see and touch and buy stuff, that is here on an appointment basis. Go on Realm, our church software, or check our church website in order to sign up uh, to do that shopping over the next several weeks. I would also want to show you this. As part of our neighboring movement and the reaching out into our mission field, you can download this uh, from our church website, from your e-newsletter, or you can find hard copies here at the church, door hangers. doesn't even have our church name on it, but it allows you to say thank you to your neighbors for being your neighbors wherever you live. A simple and an authentic way to tell your neighbors that you care in the name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, this upcoming holiday week, our church offices will be closed Monday through Friday. We'll be back here next Sunday, of course, for live and virtual worship. We're so glad you're here. I'm Matt Gaston, the lead pastor. Welcome to worship this morning. Please join us in the call to worship. God has said, this is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. The Lord has chosen us. God desires to live among us. We are blessed to have God call us home. With God among us, we will be clothed with salvation. The faithful will shout for joy. With a faithful shout, we proclaim Christ our King. May the corners of the earth hear our cry. Jesus Christ is our King. Come. Let us worship our one and only Savior. Amen. Crown him with many crowns.
thing. I'm just here trying to build my strength so that I can become more powerful. There are so many things and people out there who are powerful. There are scary storms that have so much power. There are those things that you think might be in the dark that we feel like have so much power. There are so many people who are powerful and they use that power to make it harder on others. But who is more powerful than all of these? Today is Christ the King Sunday and we celebrate how Jesus is king over all. Jesus is more powerful than any of these that I've spoken about. Today in our scripture passage, Paul also talks about those who are servants to the king, who are believers in Jesus, that's us, have that same power working in and through us. Can you believe that? What should we do with that God-given power in our lives? We have the power to love others as Jesus does. We have the power to care for others, to help heal the sick. We have the power to help those who are hungry. We have the power to teach others about Jesus and to show others the ways that Jesus has shown us. We are truly power-filled disciples of the King Jesus Christ, and we should be here to serve. Will you please say a prayer with me? Dear God, we thank you for this Christ the King Sunday as we celebrate the power that Jesus has over all. God, help us to use your power that is working through us and in us to show others the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 
power of Christ all sin. Here in the power of Christ all sin. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, as we look back today at this year of 2020, we acknowledge that it has been challenging. We acknowledge that there have been hurdles, lessons learned, plans canceled. And blessings, Lord, we acknowledge that there have been blessings, visions of the future church now. We realize that we, the church, are the fullness of your love. On Thanksgiving Sunday, we have to ask, though, how is it in this year that we can express our gratitude to you? How can we express our thanks for our faith community? And then we read of that church in Ephesus, and it says that people heard what that church was doing, how they were loving, inspiring. We pray that others have been hearing and been inspired by First United Methodist Church Plano. And so we say Thanksgiving is appropriate. It is appropriate for us to respond, giving thanks for the challenging opportunities to be a witness of love and faithfulness. Thanksgiving for the hope to which you have called us to respond to a hurting world with the same wholeness and healing love as Christ, to see no separation between us and other humans, and none between us and you. We know, O oh God, that gratitude leads to more gratitude. And in the presence of a faithful God, we pray that we may be a faithful people, who are open, ready, and willing to continue Christ Church for the sake of the whole world. This is our inheritance as followers of Christ today. We are the future church now, O God, and so we do come to you with great thanksgiving. And we pray all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our text today is from Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 23, known as one of the letters to both the Ephesians, but also to the churches in the general region, sometimes called an encyclical, meaning you could have filled in the name Ephesians with any of the churches in the Lyca Valley. For today, you could have filled in the name of the church as First United Methodist Church of Plano. For it would seem he intended this for all believing Christians. I invite us to hear Paul's word for them then and for us now. Paul writes, chapter 1 beginning in the 15th verse. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love of all God's people. This is the reason that. I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. 
I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now, but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body, his body. The church is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, you who are above all, in all, and through all, be in and through us this morning. As we gather in your Son's name, seek to proclaim his power and to live into that power together. Amen. Four or five months ago, when our worship planning team was getting into the details of this fall and this coming Advent season, I asked our team the question, in a year like on any other, what will we do for Advent that brings our people a renewed sense of hope and a renewed sense of empowerment like few Advent seasons before. And Robin intuitively came back several weeks later with an answer. And when she showed us the material that we would use beginning next Sunday, I knew that was right. I knew absolutely that was right. I believe in the sun, S U N. I believe in the sun even when. And I knew that was the right material for this season because four or five months ago, I knew that by this time, we would all feel exhausted from Zoom calls. I knew several months ago that by this time, we would feel exhausted by a pandemic. I knew we would feel exhausted by the election season. I knew we would feel exhausted by being able to be with the people we love most. Families afar, families even near but behind the walls within residential units for our older adults. I knew by now we'd be exhausted by schooling in whatever form that was going to take in the mixed bag that is schooling. We'd be exhausted by games after games, events after events being scheduled and then canceled. I knew we would just be exhausted. And so I knew that this material was just right. I believe even when. That material we've actually used before, and I knew it'd be right for this season because before we ever sang that song and did this material a year or two ago. Since that time to now, my wife and I had the opportunity to go to a place where that song, that lyric, was scrawled. A little over a year ago, we went to Germany, and it was high on my list that at some point during that trip, we would visit a concentration camp. And so... One day, we left Munich and went outside about 15 miles, and we went to Dachau. One of hundreds of concentration camps across Germany and the uh, abiding and accompanying Nazi countries around it, where over the course of six years between 1939 and 1945, six million Jews were imprisoned, tortured, and murdered. And it was exactly in a prison cell like the ones we saw at Dachau that the words for this song by Mark Miller were scribed. I believe in the sun, even when the sun is not 
shining. And I knew five months ago that that was the material that we had to use for this coming Advent season beginning next Sunday. And I knew I would cry because I cry every time that we hear or sing that song. And I know what you're thinking right now. Wow, I, I thought I came to church for good news. Did I, did I miss a wrong exit? Did I, did I come to the wrong church? Stay with me. Remember, you got to go through the valley of the shadow of death before you get to the green pastures. You've got to go through a valley before you get to the high mountain. You've got to go down, and I know this as a cyclist. If you go down, you know you're going to come back up. So stay with me. I believe in the sun, even when the sun is not shining in our exhaustion. So where do we go? Where do we go to find the up after the down? Where do we go to find that which renews our strength instead of saps our strength? Where do we go? Where on earth, where on God's green earth do we go? We go to God. We go to those who know God intimately. And so we go to Paul. Because like our Jewish foremothers and four sisters who carried faith in God, and like our Christian foremothers and forefathers who carried their faith, so Paul, who was both Jewish and Christian, carried his faith. And he carried his faith in such a way that he could have written, I believe in the sun even when the sun is not shining because he wrote these letters, Ephesians, Colossians, from prison. And yet his, when you read, is not a tone of exhaustion. His is not a tone of hopelessness, but his is a tone rather of confidence. His is a tone of joy. His is a tone of thanksgiving. Hear what he says at this very beginning of this section, toward the very beginning of the letter. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. How on earth does Paul find strength? How on earth does he find patience? How on earth does he find the same simple declarative statement of faith that a Jewish prisoner did in a Nazi prison 80 years ago? He finds it with God. He finds it in the God in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ's body, the church. That it is Christ operating through Christ's body that he finds people who love Christ as he does. He finds his source of inspiration. He finds his place of nourishment, food that you do not know of, Jesus said to his disciples. And from that place of imprisonment, he finds new life. The same new life that God had granted to Jesus Christ he is experiencing through Christ the church. Remember last week we talked about in Thessalonians how it was that, G, that Paul was encouraged by their faithfulness. How they had escorted him out of harm's way, got him safely down the coast. And how in the intervening time these letters back and forth mutually encouraged one another. Where does he find his strength? He finds it in gratitude. He finds it in thanksgiving. And specific thanks to God for God's power working through the people of the church. When you, I read the text, you might have noticed how often the word power shows up. Six to seven times, depending upon translation. Emphasizing for Paul the undoubted, triumphal, power of God that is available to all who believe in God 
through Jesus Christ. He even uses Roman imagery and turns it on its ear. He no doubt has a breastplate of love and faith and a helmet of hope. For he says here that the same God who opens your eyes, opens your hearts, will put all things under your feet. That's Caesar language, who demanded that all things be under Caesar's feet. Paul turns on its ear again to say that, no, you, the believers, you who may feel exhaustion, will have all things by the power of God placed underneath your feet because of Jesus Christ. Count on it, regardless of what prison you feel yourself to be in. Gratitude. What Paul writes to the Ephesians, I could have written and actually did in my newsletter article this past week. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. The church at Ephesus the church at Thessalonica, the church at Colossae, the church at Corinth. All of them were filled with believers who Paul absolutely loved and who empowered him even as they supported him in prison and out of prison. And like him, I can use that exact same proclamation of thanksgiving to say, this is the church for which I give thanks every day in my prayers. And I do. I want to show you a few slides. They'll run randomly in no particular order because that's the way Thanksgiving is. It doesn't go in chronological order. It goes as the heart speaks. But as you see some of these images flash, just know that they're representative of the multiple reasons for why I remember you in my prayers every day. I think that's especially important in this year of all years. I am thankful for a team that I get to work with called my colleagues, friends, and staff. When on March 15th, we live streamed a worship service for the very first time, and none of us knew what the heck we were doing except Nigel Eastman. And because of his expert work, we were able to pivot and turn and embrace and enhance and to offer what we've been able to do now for going on nine months. Who saw that coming? I am thankful for every Friday, a group of 20 men, most of them and one woman, most of them over 70, who make this place shine who make our lawns glow and create the invitational feeling that you get every time you drive by our place. Is there a wall to paint? Is there a bulb to change? Is there a fixture? Do you need a room fixed? Do you need woodwork done? A group of selfless men and women who make this church, this physical plant, the gem that it is right where it sits. It brings tears to my eyes when women like Charlene Cronister and Jill Stoll and all whole bevy of women crank, over, crank out over 500 knit and quilted items to simply give away to hospitals, shelters, people in distress in our church and outside our church. I give thanks every day in my prayers to a church under Leslie and Debbie's leadership who steps out and gives blood, who collects food, who distributes food, who makes sure we raise over $10,000 to join with five other congregations and raising over $100,000 to feed God's children in our mission field. I'm thankful for Anna and Eddie Clinton, who I first saw in the Dallas Morning News, who, without being asked, led what became movement amongst our members to make sure that meals were delivered, that phone calls were made, that errands were run, so that nobody got left behind in our church. 
I am thankful that there are people who ironically in a pandemic period are saying I feel closer and more emotionally connected to my church now than I did when we were able to come to church every week. Why? Because our hearts were opened, our eyes were opened to the needs and the ability to meet the needs of persons right here in our midst and beyond our midst. I'm thankful to God and remember every day in my prayers the way our youth have been so active. Our children have been so active in a Zoom exhausted world. Bless their hearts that they live in and still gather for Bible study and they still gather to carry out mission objectives socially distance, mission objectives to veterans, to senior citizens, to persons in schools, that they are really the hands and feet and the express love of Christ through this Christ body, the church. I am so thankful for a church that has remained faithful in its giving so that we can continue to improve and expand the use of this building in ways that are faithful to its mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world by way of connecting God and grace to self and community. We have determined to keep doing that in more and varied ways precisely because of a pandemic and a year that's been exhausting. I find that energizing. I find that life-giving. And I find that to be inspiring in a way that allows me to simply believe in the sun, even when the sun is not shining. Terry Parsons is not a name you know, but most every clergy person in the North Texas Conference certainly knows his name. Terry's been a longtime mental health expert, a writer, and a counselor to most of us. Cammie and I will go see Terry once a year for a counseling checkup to find out how we're doing, just like you would go to a dentist or a doctor. Um, But one of my friends in in ministry went to Terry and said, Terry, I am having a difficult time going to sleep at night, and I'm waking up exhausted in the morning. I go to bed thinking of everything I haven't done, and I go to bed worried about what is facing me tomorrow, and how am I going to muster the energy to do that? And then I don't sleep well. And then I wake up and I'm anxious because that same laundry list is right there in front of me and I still don't know how I'm going to get it all done and I fret. And Terry, in Terry's way, just smiled at my friend and said, I'd like to make a suggestion. When you go to bed at night, first, turn off your phone. Second, I want you to think of one thing that you accomplished that day, every day before you go to bed, one thing you accomplished that day that made you feel good for what you had done. And then I want you to take a piece of paper or a prayer journal, and I want you to write down 10 things, 10 things for which you are grateful that day. One thing you've accomplished that you feel good about and 10 things that you are really grateful for. And then see how your sleep goes. And do you know that was like an elixir? Do you know that my friend slept soundly that night, woke up refreshed, and did not feel the burden, but did feel grateful? And that has been his pattern ever since to leave the day's work behind with one known accomplishment and 10 points of gratitude. And his life is better. I'm grateful for a week that allows us to formally and informally, together and separate, give thanks to God. And I want to encourage us every night, pat ourselves on the back and say, well done, good and faithful servant, for one thing you got done and 10 things for which you are grateful. See how your sleep goes. I am grateful for you. And hear of the faith that you are living in vital ways. And I remember you daily in my prayers. You enable me to say with a simple declaration like Paul and like our Jewish forefather, 
I believe in the sun, even when the sun is not shining. This is the good news. May we hear it and live it. Amen. I was in the office the other day, and one of our many gracious volunteers who give of their time to help us manage the huge amounts of work that go through our office on a daily basis, uh, Carol and Ellis. And she stopped me as I was going through, and she said, Matt, I want you to know that that sermon that Cammie preached last week really, really touched me. And I said, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, And she goes, no, I want you to know, it really touched me. In fact, it touched me several times in a way that I've never been touched before by a stewardship sermon, and it poked me to know I need to turn in my estimate of giving card because I think so much of this church. And I said, Carolyn, I'm going to tell Cammie you said that. Thank you. If you haven't yet turned in your estimate of giving card or filled out a recurring way of giving, which you can easily do on our website or talk to Lori Kimbrell, I invite you to do so. Uh, For that too is an expression, a recurring expression of thanksgiving for all that God is doing in your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Schrader. I'm part of the new UMW Market Team. This is our main fundraiser this year that we're doing in lieu of the Tea and Silent Auction that raises the most money for the charities we serve in our community, including C.C. Young Senior Living Center and Dallas Bethlehem Center, among many more. We serve the underserved women, youth, and children in our area, and we really need your participation to make it work this year. There's in-person shopping, which is available on Sundays through December 13th. We have six-person, 20-minute shifts from 1 to 4 p.m. You can sign up for those through Sign Up Genius, and we can get you that link if you're interested. In addition, if you don't feel safe shopping in person, we have online shopping on Realm. All of the items will be listed, and it's easy to purchase and pay online, or you can pay by cash or check when you pick up your items on Tuesdays from 5.30 to 6 p.m. in our drive through pickup lanes, which will be clearly marked for your use. We hope you all participate in this very important endeavor because we need to raise money for our charities who are so much more in need this year with all we have going on with COVID. Thank you.
On this Thanksgiving week, I bid you safety. And I bid you security with your loved ones and a really good meal. And I pray you this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving.